Hello, my name is Andy O'Neill, and thanks for watching Weblitica TV. I'm joined today by my friend Sebastian Mertens. Sebastian is the co-founder of We Make Future, a European-based cloud automation company. Sebastian is very passionate about IT-driven workforce automation. We Make Future is a registered Integramat partner, Zapier certified experts, and an automation hero partner. Welcome, Sebastian. Hey, thanks for hosting me, Andy, today. Yeah, nice to be here and nice to talk about automation. What's going on in this amazing world that's so crazy good yeah thanks for being here so we're going to jump into a lot about integramat especially from an agency perspective but before we dive in i'd like to hear a little about your story your journey to kind of where you are today as the co-founder of a cloud automation agency yeah uh well it all started with i have to be honest sap here um because i, I was working in banking in uh, 2014 and um, I was having like a little side business and there were these people asking me, okay, hey, you know, I want to have my contact form from my web page automatically connected to my Google Sheet. And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. There's this new tool, it's called Sapier, it's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, this was like the first automation processes. Then I went more and more into digital consultancy in, in the banking industry. And then I went to uh, consultancy uh, in general and um, went into process automation there. And I encountered a lot of people using RPA. I mean, RPA is a really good technology if you have legacy systems, but when you have an API and in the future you have like a thousand of APIs, there will be no front end without a back end with an API. That's impossible to imagine. So everything will be API based one day. And if everything is API based, why not automate it? And yeah, that was the moment when I saw in America, the first automation agencies coming up only focused on the new technology but not focus on RPA. So I thought, okay, why not doing that in Europe at the same time? And yeah, we did that two and a half years ago. We started with We Make Future and that's pretty much the journey till today. Cool. And you guys have grown quite a bit. I mean, I, yeah. I thought you'd been around longer than that, but you've got a lot of people kind of around the world working with you and for you, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. We're currently... Uh, uh, the hardest part is getting into America, being honest, um, as, as you know. Uh, we will try that again uh, in, in a few months. Um, but in Europe, we, we work for a lot of companies already. And we this week got another client from Netherlands again, got a lot of clients probably from Finland. Um, and yeah, so it's quite good going currently. And we, we grow with uh, corporation partners. We try not to like have everybody in Germany. We try to have them around in Europe. Uh, I just today had a call with somebody who sp speaks seven languages, which is really important because Europe, <laughs> as you know, we speak so many different languages. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I just speak one. I, it seems like Americans just speak one language. We, yeah. But that I, I love it that in Europe, people know multiple languages. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you cannot come along. You know, we're having this right. Integromat conference in, in December. Just imagine me only speaking German there. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> So let's talk about automating with Integramat, uh, especially with your clients. How do you approach um, that at We Make Future when you when you uh, come uh, when you approach an automation client and client mm -hmm. needs stuff automated? Yeah, uh, well, it depends. We have, of course, an automated uh, customer journey or nearly automated customer journey. Um, it partly depends on what the client wants. Uh, we have like a pre checkup form. Based on their answers, they come in like a first uh, checkup call where we define what they need. Um, then after the first call, we send them a questionnaire or if the call was so good and they are so well prepared that we can, can tell them directly, hey, you know what, it costs going to cost you 5,000 euros. Let's do this and that. I give you a project manager. You have a team here. Let's start. This could also be a case. So it really depends on the kind. Um, or sometimes people just ask, hey, what's possible? That's actually the worst question because I can tell them everything and they're going to be like, okay, tell me what's everything. I'm like, yeah, you could do that or that and you're guessing around. So in, in, in these cases, um, what I think is the most important thing in the a, in a first call is always listen to the people, get their ideas, get their imagination, and then slowly start building their processes. That makes sense. Now you have some, uh, and you you showed us one of these in the partner Slack yesterday. But you kind of have some um, 
partner uh, or, or some, I call them sidecar products that kind of bolt up to yeah. Integramat that kind of have some extra functionality. Talk about how that fits in with your agency mm. and with clients. Yeah. Well, currently our business model is like a pipe, pipeline business model. Okay. Client comes in, we serve the client, project is done. Maybe we do another retention project or we do another project with a client or a new client comes. So it is always an exchange of time against money. That's basically the agency business model. Of course, you can sell a retainer for doing services for them, but it's it's not really scalable. But we've built a lot of knowledge. As you know, we have like these error handlers. We have these service management frameworks. And, on, and what we will show with that um, automated support ticketing system, what you can do for a client, um, all, all of these service technologies or that marketplace we try to build for Integromat um, for like second party apps and, and all these more scalable services um th that's what we're currently building but like the, the biggest thing we do or did is one SaaS. so we see like everybody everybody in the community is using multiple apis i mean they have their core systems it's like a hubspot salesforce or something like that but then they have tools like cloud convert then they use an upload care then they use an ABS Lambda and they have to manage all of these tools. They have to pay for all their 10 bucks, 10 bucks, 10 bucks. And what we thought like was super annoying. We have so many tools for so many clients. We have to maintain them. And we thought one day it's, it's no rocket science to basically, that the problem is to have an, a front end for these tools. But basically you don't need a front end because the front end is Integromat. You just use the API. So we thought, why not just build an API? Why not? come up and that is the, the, the core value of that product. We came up with an IT architecture where we can launch multiple 100 APIs till the end of the year, which solve low code and no code limits. For example, running Python or JavaScript in Interromat. For example, multiple replacing. Everybody knows the pain of replacing of the replace of replacement in Interromat. That's really painful. Or in SAPI or in N8N. It doesn't matter. It's all of these automation platforms. Or in uh, you can even attach one SaaS to, to a Monday or to an Airtable. We're going to build an app for that. So you can basically not only run code in the Airtable module of the code module of Airtable, you can run it in our app too. And so you can do replacements in there. And this, this side product is basically all the knowledge we get from these low code and no code tools who work every day. And yeah, we move this knowledge into a scalable SaaS product. And so basically, I mean, I call those like mini APIs. It's like an API yeah. you hit to solve a, a very specific, specific recurring problem. problem. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. For, for example, it's a, that's, it's a really human use case. We have a client that says, you know what? We're going home at five in the evening and we don't work on the weekends. So if a contact form is filled out after five, PM or on the weekend, they should automatically please get a PDF. Well, that 5 PM is pretty easy solvable, but which day is working day or not? And which day is a working day if they have bank holidays? So either you start generating yourself a really long list or you use an list. API. Right. Yeah. Or you just use an API for that. And you have to do that for multiple nations probably because the client is working in 17 countries. So we, and, and all these problems we solved in projects. So we have the data and we have the API endpoints and now we move them on an architecture framework and we just launched it. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, I've, I built one of those, a similar one of those with a client where we're processing RSS feeds and a lot of RSS feeds will strip the apostrophe out of a contraction. So, you know, yeah. so we just, we created a list of contractions and we said, you know, we, we hit that mini API and it fixes it and it saves tons of time fixing that very specific recur, recurring problem. problem. Yeah. yeah. And what we want to do with one SaaS, for example, your case, uh, I offered it several partners, actually two are really interested in that. Bring me the case, okay, you currently run and we make an API point of, out of that and you get the revenue which goes over that API endpoint. Because for us, the, the vision is, we, we all think in platform systems. We don't want to be just an API. We want to be a platform for solving low-code and no-code problems. We are an API. So we need these real-world use cases. 
And we want, of course, and that's the difference to, to, to other software providers, we don't want to just copycat it and say, hey, thank you, and give you the chance to use it. No, we want that you profit from it, because then the next time you have a problem, you think, okay, why not standardize that problem and launch an API for that problem? Yeah, that makes sense. And that's one of the things I love about you is you, you have a very giving heart and you're like, hey, let's share in the revenue. Uh, here, use this tool for free for a while and test yeah. it and give me feedback. So I, I, I love that with my interactions with you from the past. So. Yeah, th th that's, that's how you, you know, that's how you, uh, how I think we, we grew so fast, you know. Um, basically, what we will do is we, of course, we have some costs because it's running on a lot of APIs in the back and we have some service side costs and things like that. Um, but as soon as all these guys using the API, I will post out the discount code. I don't care about earning money in there. I care about having more users that are happy, that are testing and making the system more stable. Being honest, this is a new IT product. It probably has some bugs. <laughs> software without, without a bug is not a software. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about scaling with Integramat. And I've kind of broken this into three three parts. So what are some of the uh, client side issues with scaling, some of the issues with Integramat and some of the agency issues as mm, you scale? Mm. Um, and I, you can start with the first one. I can remind you of the other one. So you know, what are the client side issues when you start scaling? Uh, understanding. Basically, what we're doing is complex. It is not a car where you go in a store and purchase a car. It is not a microwave where you turn it on, it's done. It is something which constantly improves processes in businesses changing. They're constantly changing. They're doing it six months that way and then they think, okay, no, we wanna do it that way. It's adjustment over adjustment over adjustment. So you need to make people understand, hey, if you really wanna automate this, how long does it stick like that? If you automate it this way, it's gonna cost this, 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 this opportunity but you have probably these problems. And this is something where you really need to educate, take the client with you on your journey. And some, being honest there, what we're trying currently is we want to make the client our advocate. We want to make the client so skilled that he can basically automate 60 person herself. The easy things, hey, saving that Gmail attachment into your Google Drive, Seriously, don't bother me. <laughs> I, I would like to do it, but it's blocking our pipeline and we probably have issues because we don't get authorized and, and things like that. No, so please save it yourself. Oh, you want to automatically extract via an AI the content of the PDF. That's our job. And that's what we're trying to do. So we're trying to build more, we call them citizen automation developers in companies. So they can actually think about more and bigger problems, higher qualified leads, basically, with bigger, way, way bigger projects, because they can imagine them. We basically educate them to imagine huge projects and not tiny things. Right. And, and one of the things I see with clients is, you know, you automate one process and then they want to change their business model or change the process. Yeah. Like, it's just this constant, you know, uh, work and rework as, as they're, I mean, cause businesses don't typically businesses don't just sit there and do the same thing for years upon yeah. end. There's always improvement, <laughs> always changes. So. I, I have a client who's doing literally, he's telling me, he's telling me, I do that now for like 20 years and it's working like that 20 years. And now I want to automate. I was like, how did you do that 20 years later? Yeah. I was having like a lot of Chinese, tiny people. I was like, really? I was like, yeah, <laughs> I had it today. That call. It was funny. Wow. Okay. Whatever. Let's continue. So uh, some, some Integramat issues with scaling, dealing with the platform and, and managing those. Uh, yeah, like whatever I say, uh, whatever I want from them is I want this email authorization feature. I want to trigger an API call where I can say, send this HubSpot authorization request in an HTML file where you click on a button, then it opens the entire Omad window with the authorization, take the user credentials, authorize the API, thank you. I don't want to constantly have the passwords and, and all these data pieces at our side. 
I don't want that. I like greetings to Terramat. They know I want that. <laughs> so, so right, so right a, now, which right now, what you're having to do is either you have to get credentials from the yeah, client, of course, or, or you have to give them, make them a user, and have them log in to. Yeah, yeah. We, we we try to get a user. That is what we always want. We want to have an own user, but still, the user has to have an um an api key the user you know this is something that works that i did the client has to pay for the user most of the times it's not a free user so this is some overhead we're generating there we need to make them try and understand and all the other limits we break with one SAS. that's the thing that's why we build it um we have some let's call it compliance and scalable things we want to solve with integromat closer but to do our knowledge we we have a bit of bigger clients um but this is like the, the core value feature is this email authorization thing. Yeah, that would be very handy for a lot of people. Yeah, and and, and in or, bigger organizations, if you say like, hey, Andy, you're working in accountant department. I work in sales, let's say. I want to save my sales receipts directly in your accounting system, but I shouldn't have access to other accountant systems because it's not in my position to see what you or other people earn probably, okay? So right. I should not have access into your accounting system, but what would be really amazing if I could say, send you, hey, trigger this, and then I'm authorized to save this file into your system directly. Therefore you get an email, easy peasy. But they know that in bigger organizations, it's really important, none, and none of these, and they're currently promoting this Gartner, um, it's got a magic quadrant and none of these tools have the security compliance feature and it is super important to have so i really hope they build it <laughs> i'm gonna tell them in december i'm gonna tell everybody <laughs> yeah december uh, sebastian's going to their offices for the first uh, integramat conference yeah um so what are some internal agency issues with scaling kind of the pain points as you grow mm -hmm. and people hiring people managing people scaling with the team this is something where in an agency business model it's always hustle it's always you know you have always constant pressure from clients you need to do this and that is something where uh, where you have a lot of pressure that's basically it. but that's the business this is the business model of an agency you know um i mean you can you can do like one big client you have one big project you do nine to five, that works pretty much. Um, but still, then you have the problem after the client is probably dropping out or the client says like, okay, uh, we want it cheaper or we want it faster. Then you still have the dependency. So what we try is to having like multiple clients and scaling multiple clients agency. Whoever did that is, knows it is a lot of effort you have to put in there and management basically. Right. So a lot of things to balance as you work with clients yeah, in an agency. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk about maintenance and monitoring. Um, I, mm -hmm. I think it's very common from Tegramat users to jump in, build something that works, set it and forget it. Um, but then there's that maintenance and monitoring. I mean, things eventually break, APIs change and that kind of thing. What are you guys doing at We Make Future to handle ongoing maintenance and monitoring, monitoring for Tegramat scenarios uh, for your clients? Mm hmm okay um now yeah, we have several currently what we're really really looking forward for is version two so a lot of things we are, are endearing we this is something where people think i'm crazy but this is where why last year as an agency last year i thought we are probably half a year maybe a year technology wise ahead okay this year we are two years, three years ahead of other agencies because we really focus about, okay, how can we make and bring the best automation to the client with the most scalable way? For example, with that replacer, it's saving hundreds of operations. You know, it's way, way more solid, way faster. It's fle more flexible in changing things. And in error management, we have our own error handler developed. We have developed it's a, we have developed a solution for that, but the principle in information technology is called um, Mars, ma master data um, principle. Uh, so basically let me simply explain, you get data from the webhook, from the first webhook, and then 
you want to see how it is processed and then you want to have the output data. So you can say basically from the input to the output data, what changed. And if something is crashing, you always can go back to the master data. So you know that if you messed up an API and you don't know what happened, you can just simply click a button and it will re-roll it. And this is something which is super, super important if you think about scaling and Terraform. And these principles we already experienced. We um, did an auto launching, so we can now basically sell standard scenarios. We have a lot of startups that always want the same. And we can just tell them, hey, purchase the startup package. You get a fully automated company. And you just pay 500 bucks and you're done. But basically, we run, we run it automatically. And that's, that's super, super cool. So that's, that's kind of getting into reselling, uh, you know, reselling automations, which I know is yeah. something that we've talked about. Alex and, basically works with. Yeah, right. Alex is cr- doing that yeah. a lot um, to where, you know, instead of 10% of, of what you do for every client is repeatable, it becomes more like, you know, 50 or 70 or you know, ideally 100. Probably yeah. we'll never get there, but it's... It, yeah, yeah, even Google will get there. Time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So tell us about We Make Future. And uh, if somebody's watching this and they're like, hey, I want to work with Sebastian. What, what, what kind of projects do you take on and how can they work with you? Mm. Okay, currently um, we... Si- since we grew a bit in the company, um, we are looking for more clients that either know ex- specifically what they want um, or they say, okay, yeah, we are looking for a bigger agency with more people that can really scale processes. Okay. So when you need a team of five developers, that's racking up your business in half a year, automating everything. And we're talking about businesses that have a scale of 250, 500,000 people that want to really do a switch to automation. And this is something what I address, uh, to Interromat is just think about reselling bigger licenses of Integromat. I mean, it's good. It is a really good software. And the, the issue is always the adoption. You cannot sell 12 million operations and expect that a company instantly consumes or uses 12 million operations because people need to get trained. People need to really build use cases for it. So you need either to have a big development team and you don't get that because it is a new software. You need to hire people. And this is what we're looking for currently. So we are more going for bigger fish. Um, but still, we, we start with tiny projects because we need to also train people on, on tiny projects. That's, that's like our starting thing. So we have basically everything covered from 300 euros to even 100,000 euros. That's covered. Yeah. Okay, very good. And we make future.com is the place to go to get a hold of you guys. Right. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Do you have anything else you want to add before we finish up today? Ah, no, it was really nice for being here. Thank you.